Hi Vicky, thank you for sending in these essays and I'm sorry about the confusion, correcting the wrong ones, how silly, what a waste of your time. Um, here we go then, looking at local governments pushing companies to move. Uh, this is a really, really good essay. It's an interesting topic and you've understood it very well. Uh, so in terms of task achievement, very clear, you've done a nice argument uh, and you've answered the question, absolutely. You've done benefits and you've done drawbacks. Really good on that one. Cohesion and coherence. It's very easy for me to read and understand. It reads very fluently, uh, very naturally, and the arguments, the structure is good. Um, and you've connected it with these nice words here to make it easy to sort of showing the examiner where you're going in your thoughts. So that's great. Um, first introduction paragraph. I don't have any issues with this at all. I like this contentious uh, topic whether governments should encourage enterprises to relocate from metropolitan areas to the countryside. Yeah, really good rewording here. Nice paraphrasing. Even though resettlement might lead to detrimental impacts on some companies, this move can significantly increase regional employment. Yes, fantastic. Such a good introduction. Well done. On the one hand, ample evidence that... Now, I like saying ample evidence to suggest that, but it's okay. That moving to rural areas can be harmful to many companies. The reason behind this is twofold. Yeah, authorities to tend to give rash promises. Now, I think the word you mean is rash, R-A-S-H, but I would say over-promise. Um, to give rash promises is a little bit informal. I would say tend to over-promise. Uh, for example, um, developing sound or offering developing improved transport and power supply in the regional areas to motivate businesses to relocate. However, most of these promises, yes, or commitments, require considerable time to achieve, and as a result, yes, productivity may be hindered. Very good. Super vocab here. Secondly, without the fierce competition, no S, in the urban markets, rural enterprises are less likely to be motivated to improve their client services. Yes, this is really, really good. It's a very good example, very interesting. I would just put here in the end, uh, it's conclusively clear that relocation might lead to adverse consequences for these companies and their customers because yeah, you've made the point there that the customer service won't be so good. On the other hand, there are numerous benefits of pressing companies to move to rural areas. Yeah, okay, so we've got the other side of the argument. Job opportunities, decreasing the population. Yes, this is really interesting, well done, and a good example there. So that reads really, really well. So we're going to hear conditional sentence. If the wide range of if a wide range of companies relocate, sing, uh, no s, sorry, to the countryside, no s, it's plural anyway, it will. Now I would hedge your language here, so it could create more diverse job options for uh, for the locals you want to have there for the locals, and enable them to fulfil their career dreams. Yes, really nice example. So, for example, this movement can effectively close the income gap and reduce infrastructure imbalance. Possible to state beyond doubt that I don't like pushing. I think it's um, too informal. I know it's in the question, but let's say incentivizing companies to relocate to uh, the suburbs or out of town can be beneficial for society. So to conclude, although relocation might decrease the efficiency and motivation, authorities should encourage it. Yes, absolutely. Really, really nice. Um, fantastic essay. I think you've developed that so well. Uh, your grammar's excellent. Lots of complex sentences, which are really lovely. Lots of great vocab there. Lovely collocations. It reads really, really well, Vicky. Fantastic. OK, let's go on to the next one. OK, so here we've got a letter. Sorry, I'm going up in the wrong order. Here we go. Um, the all relative who's arriving for a night. This is the friendliest letter. You've got the tone absolutely right. So informal, friendly, really perfect. Honestly, I think I'd like to come to Melbourne and meet you. It sounds like lots of fun. Um, so I would just put here, um, I'm sorry to tell you that. It's a little bit formal. More natural, I think, would be this. I'm so sorry that I can't be there to meet you because... Or even you don't need that, actually. I'm so sorry I can't be there to meet you because... I have to go to an important presentation, or I can't meet you at the, at the airport or whatever, um, because I have to go to this presentation. Let me tell you the directions, S, from the airport to my house and where I'll hide the keys for the front door. Okay, lovely. From the airport, very clear instructions. Yes, really good. I like that. Easy to follow. My house is a five-minute walk from Moreland Station. I'll put my keys under, we will say a plant pot. 
in the garden as shown in the picture and you can help yourself to anything in the house so really friendly um, start nice plan for the evening we can go to Eureka Town to see Mel I would say the Melbourne cityscape with some nice drinks and a cheese platter okay let me know if you have any questions can't wait to see you soon fantastic essay Vicky totally perfect well done um quick uh comment some of these uh directions and um questions just check on the plural s sometimes if that's something that you for you um struggle with or you've made mistakes on that one before quick check on that one then so really really good and then this one in contrast is a more formal letter so you want to start dear sir uh dear manager we wouldn't use that we would always say dear sir slash madam uh that would be the best way to do it I'm contacting you regarding the accident. I now you just have an accident that just collocates like that. Um, I know encountered is a better word, but the accident I had, or the you could say the um, incident, uh, you could encounter an incident, yeah, but encounter just still feels a little bit strange. Um, the incident I had um, at my last visit to your theatre. I would like to express my gratitude to employees and let me explain the details. Okay. Last Friday, I went to the theatre to watch. Yeah, uh, if you're going to use your theatre, we would say I went to the theatre and I came to your theatre. It's this idea of movement. Um, and if you're coming to somewhere, um, I come to Melbourne, I come, you know, um, it's complicated, come and go, but come would be better there. To watch The Lion King. Uh, halfway through, the fire alarm went off and the audience, CE at the end, rushed out through the fire accidents. As I'm pregnant and was alone, yeah, comma, I panicked, ED. At that moment, your staff members noticed me and uh, led me out of the theatre. Really nice, yeah. Fortunately, it was a false, false alarm and we all got our refund or we got, past tense, our full refund. Once again, grateful for your employer's observation and prompt action. Perfect. Moreover, yes, here's the suggestion. You should arrange seating for disabled, uh, with a D on the end, uh, and we would say actually the disabled, because it's a group of people, the disabled and pregnant ladies, close to the emergency exits, to secure their safety. Yeah, I might just say ensure, use that word instead, their safety when accidents happen. Um, and I would also put uh, if accidents happen, because like we don't want accidents to happen a lot. So if if ever accidents happen might be just a bit softer, okay? But fantastic, it, it's a pleasure to read your essays. You're writing very, very confidently. Um, I'm not sure when your exam is, but really good luck. Thank you.